To move a trial from idea to reality, researchers set up a group of experts. This group includes doctors, nurses, statisticians and patients. The trial management group in its early stages builds the protocol. It decides the, uh, the way that the trial will be carried out. It, it, asks, it answers questions like which patient should or should not be entered into the trial. Uh, it builds, it writes patient information leaflets. It talks to the clinicians and the researchers uh, in the hospitals that will actually run the trial. But it's basically to oversee the running of the trial from the beginning to the, to the end, to the results being found and disseminated. And one of the viewpoints that, that ought to be a part of that uh, trial management group is the viewpoint of either a patient or a carer of someone who's lived through the illness. If there are any changes needed for the protocol, then the TMG will review and approve those. And one of their roles is also to promote the trial. So members of the TMG will go to meetings and conferences and write papers to do that. The starting point for a patient taking part in a trial is when the hospital team identifies a patient as being suitable for a particular trial. The nurse or the doctor will then meet with the patient and tell them a bit about the trial. So they'll explain the aims of the trial and what the patient would be expected to do if they were to take part in the trial. They'll also be given a patient information sheet with all the information that the patient should know about the trial. The question of actually safety is a very important one because often we are looking at new interventions which perhaps have never been tried before or perhaps only on a small number of patients. And it is really very important that in fact in the conduct of the study we're making sure that the patient's safety and their well-being is a top priority. The, the funders in the first place will have actually been aware of this and indeed the, the reviewers will be aware of that. But far more than that, we have to go to ethics committees, for example, to see whether they are happy with the, what the patients are being subjected to. When the trial actually starts, there are other ways that we can address the question of safety. Quite often, of course, we will be putting extra investigations in to just monitor carefully what's actually happening to the patients. But then we have uh, perhaps the most important thing that's done is the putting in place a data monitoring committee. Now this committee, which is made up of totally independent people who have nothing to do with the conduct of the trial, but are there, in fact, to, to oversee particularly the safety aspects, they will actually, at regular intervals, usually something of the order of every four to six months, they'll be presented on all the available data, which, is, which will tell them on how safe the trial is and how individual patients are doing. If necessary, they may actually ask for extra information or indeed some modification to the protocol, the way the trial is being conducted, in order to be quite sure that the patients are not being put at unnecessary risk. There are others who are also involved in this process because each trial has what we call a, a trial steering committee. And that committee is made up from a number of different people. Some of them are people who are actually part of the investigator team. But an important part are the independent members of that committee. Usually the committee will be chaired by an independent person and several other independent people who will be keeping a critical eye on the whole way the trial is going. And so we do everything we can to make sure that patients are not put at unnecessary risk of something going wrong. Or indeed in some cases that the trial should actually be stopped because it's just not safe to continue. In Africa, the BEAST trial, which is a, the fluid bolus trial of giving fluids rapidly to children in shock with either malaria or bacteria in their blood, septicemia. Everyone expected that fluid boluses would be beneficial because they've been given quite routinely in, in Western countries and to our extreme surprise, um, the trial was stopped early because there was um, more than a 3% excess death rate in the children who received the boluses. And that was a big surprise. We had to rapidly, immediately stop recruitment. The data monitoring committee conveyed that, the, what they thought to the main trial steering committee who were in charge of the trial and I was part of that. Um, and we stopped recruitment. We looked at the results and moved fast to publish the results which came out in the New England Journal of Medicine last year. 
There are two things really that determine the duration of a study. I think one of the key factors is going to be the recruitment rate to the study. How many sites are participating in the trial? How many patients are there that could participate? And the faster the recruitment rate, the sooner we'll start to get answers coming in. But perhaps an even more important driving factor is the outcome measure that we're looking for and how quickly the events will come in. In a trial, for example, such as our radicals trial, where we're looking to improve survival in men with early stages of prostate cancer, they're going to live quite a long time anyway, and to see a difference is going to take a long time. We're anticipating there that study is going to be 13 years from first patient in to getting our answer. You could also imagine a study where you're looking at pain relief for migraine, for example, where actually each patient's participation is going to be particularly brief. The process of developing a drug is a long one. We need to make sure that drugs are safe and we need to make sure they're effective. Unfortunately, new drugs are not always better than what we have at the moment, despite the public perception, despite what our newspapers might tell us. Proving that things are, are good enough, proving that they're safe, proving that they're better than what we already have, takes a long time. We need to get it right. We've got patients' lives here.